TiVo sent me an early version of the TiVo Tornado to do an evaluation, donated to the channel, and then GearBest sent me one a little bit later to do the same. I'll give you my opinion of both of them on today's Film of Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. The TiVo Tornado was really well packed and came with an extra build tack type material. Once I got a little bit deeper, I could see the electronics and all the extra components. So this was going to take a few screws to put together, but it really wasn't much more than, say, a CR-10. The heated bed came garbage tie wrapped to the base, so I'm going to have to install the springs and the bolts for that. That's a little different than the CR-10, but the base looks like it's got an actual heater element and then wrapped in this foil insulation. So this is much better than the CR-10. So I took all the pieces out, I spread it out on my bench, and it looks like this was going to be a pretty easy assembly. The power supply is a 24 volt DC, 8.5 amps, so that's 200 watt power supply. The circuit board is an MKS base, version 1.4. And if you look close, you can see it's an AT Mega 2560, so it's an 8-bit microcontroller on the board. Now, it does have a separate solid-state relay, and this is DC controlled but AC output, so it's controlling an AC signal to the bed. The display is a pretty standard large display with the SD card, full-size SD card, which I like. And then they forgot to move the sticker on top of the little speaker, but that's all exposed. Now you have to install these springs and the nuts and these get really tight as you get this adjusted. It gets very very difficult to adjust the bed. Now I had to remove this temporary print or this test print and it didn't just peel off. I had to actually gouge at it and scrape at it with a uh, glass cleaning knife and it was much more work than it should have been and I thought about it. What really did this prove? It came with a full-size SD card, which I like, but it was completely blank. There's no sample prints on this whatsoever. So I went and got the SD card from my CR-10, figuring they're the same size printer. Let's just slip it in and see how the cat turns out. Well, that G-code doesn't match the Tornado, because this thing came out terrible. The flow rate was just awful on this thing. And I noticed that the wheel here, you see it spinning slower, and then in reverse it spins fast. This thing was spinning a lot faster with the setup that I had. I had just done a basic profile. So I went on to a Facebook group and I got a proper profile for the Tornado. And then I tried printing again, only this time I just printed my chest pawn. And this came out really good. I was happy with the results I got on my chest pawn. So then I decided to print the filament print from Matter Hackers. I printed them on the left, the full size, and then 200% on the right. And they both came out actually really good. Now, if you're wondering how it compares to the CR-10, the one on the left was done on a Tornado. The one on the right is done on the CR-10. You can see on the one on the left, Tornado, it's got some wavy lines, a circle in the face. That's got something to do with the drivers. Some people have used those TL smoothers to get rid of that. The one on the right, the CR-10, has a little bit of extrusion dots on it. Like it, I need to adjust something in my file there. But there's the difference between the two. One has those wavy lines, one doesn't. I decided to print a large Eiffel Tower for my daughter using some pink filament. came out great. Even the tip looks really, really good. I was really impressed with the results here. So at this point, I decided to assemble the second TiVo Tornado that I got from GearBest. So I put all that together. Everything looked identical to the first. Well, let me stop here and ask, why did they do this? Is this just to prove the bed was flat? Because I had to install the screws and springs anyway, so it really wasn't adjusted. I really don't know what the purpose of all this was. But on this one, I wanted to try out this Eddy Cubic Ultra Base glass for the CR-10 or the Tornado. It's a 310 by 310 millimeter glass bed. So I peeled this stuff off, didn't need that, and put one right here on this TiVo Tornado. I found out from the first one that the knobs are just too hard to turn. So I printed out these knob extensions that I found on Thingiverse, and this made it so much easier to adjust the bed. Now the other thing it didn't have was a spool holder. So I printed out these spool holders and I ended up doing these on the first TiVo Tornado because when I tried it on the one from GearBest, I was getting all kinds of shifting. One did a little bit of shift, you can see in the yellow, and the green one 
man, this thing was shifting back and forth. And this isn't a position. It was all front to back kind of shifting. I printed a filament and I got the same shifting. You see multiple points along his body here, including the top of his head. It shifted. I was able to get a small filament to print and then my chest palm printed without any shifting. I began to wonder if the change I made to put the glass bed on the, on the base was causing too much weight, but this thing moved easier than the other printer that isn't shifting. So I don't think that was the problem. I think I just need to bump up the current on the stepper because it's clearly losing steps. There's been so many times I've given a review of a printer and then I'll see someone comment that they bought one and they didn't get anywhere near the results that I did. So it was nice to get two different boxes from two different places of the same printer and see what the differences were. And this one ended up printing just fine. This one gave me the shifting problem. I believe it's probably the current drive for the motor, so I'm going to tweak the current up a little bit to see if that takes it away. But right now, if I had this, I'd be very frustrated. This one, I'd be pretty happy. Now, the difference between these and the CR10, I know everyone's going to ask which one would I recommend or which one would I buy. Even though I've played with this machine and I really like the results I'm getting, I just like my CR10 that much better. It's just been very reliable for me. Um, if they're the same price, I'd probably buy a CR10. But I've seen a lot of mods on this already. People putting BL touches on it. People showing how to reflash this. So to me, this is really a little more of a hacker's 3D printer than a CR10. CR10 tends to block some of that. Although I know Marlin has a, a config.h for that now. So you can basically create your own firmware. But that's an advantage here plus the heated bed this thing heats up a lot faster with that insulation and the true heating element um, some say you know it's the ac i really am not sold that it's the ac but it's definitely higher voltage so that helps but it definitely heats up faster than the cr10 now the fact that this one doesn't have a spool holder i mean come on my 154 dollar ebay printer had a spool holder you could have included this tivo and the fact I couldn't adjust the knobs, I like to adjust that bed just as that first layer is going down. I like to tweak the knobs. I couldn't do it on either one of these machines. They're both so tight. Those springs are so strong. So printing these knobs or these knob extensions is critical. You have to do it if you want to really adjust your bed. And that's something TiVo should include or put a bigger knob on these things. So that out of the box is to me a pain a spool holder and adjustable knobs i don't have to worry about that the knobs on my cr10 adjust fine and it does have a spool holder you may not like it but at least it's got one so those are definite advantages and that's something i think tivo needs to fix on any future tornadoes that's my honest opinion but before you decide to buy any printer check out other reviews go online talk to people on facebook make a smart decision when you buy it now, I do have links for this one, the CR10 and the Anycubic, in the description below. If you do want to buy and you want to use those links, it helps me out on the channel. But by all means, please do your homework. Make sure that when you buy, you're comfortable with what you're buying. And I hope I helped you along that path. So I've been putting out videos for a little over three years. I've been putting one out every Friday. I haven't missed a Friday. I'm fighting a cold and I still got this one out. I've even put some videos out in between, and I know how much work that takes. But I want to give a shout out to the Print 3D channel. It's run by a guy named Jeff. He's done a print every day and put a video out every day for 365 days. What's well, coming up, it's going to end at the end of this year, will be his 365th video. Man, that takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. If you have not checked out his channel, I'll put a link in the description below. Go check it out. Print 3D channel. Jeff, amazing what you've done. Let's maybe subscribe to him. Let's get him up above, you know, 4,000 subscribers or, or so. I think he's at 2,800 now. Show him some love. Let's get him some subscribers for all that work. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, check out some of these videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon. If nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. And most of all, have a Merry Christmas. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.